So, Paul, uh, welcome and thank you for accepting our invitation for this interview today. My pleasure. Good Hello. morning. Uh, so, the discussion is going to be all about uh, French investments in rail freight. Uh, from what we know, the French government in, uh, aims to invest 170 million euros to the sector. Why do you think this investment is necessary? Well, it is necessary because um, when you look at the past, mm -hmm. um, the rail freight in France has suffered a significant decline for 40 years between, uh, say, 1970 and 2010. Mm -hmm. For the last 10, 12 years, um, it has been more or less flat. However, the market share of rail freight in France um, is about 9%. Mm -hmm. And that's not satisfactory if you compare it to the um, European average, uh, which is more around 18%. Mm -hmm. So there is this uh, belief, which is shared by the sector and by the government, that um, there is a potential for growth for rail freight um, in France. Mm -hmm. So the main idea is that the government wants to boost rail freight in France. So it's all about boosting uh, the market share of rail freight, or let's say it's all about uh, the model shift, right? Exactly. Uh, basically, uh, railway undertakings and operators expect that um, with this kind of support, uh, the market share of rail freight could be doubled in, in 10 years. Okay, that's an interesting uh, number. Now, we have heard that part of the 170 million euros is going to be invested in uh, truck access charges. Is this the only place that uh, the funding is going to be allocated or is there more? Well, it's this 170 million support um, could be divided into four pieces. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is um, actually to support a uh, single wagon, that's 70 million. Mm -hmm. The second one is to support combined transports, and that's 47 million. Mm -hmm. The third one is to support the rail transport of semi-trailers in, in what we call uh, rolling highways, and mm -hmm. that's 15 million. And the remaining uh, is, as you said, to, um, um, to fund a reduction of the track access charges. Mm -hmm. So this means that uh, rail freight operators will pay less. They will pay approximately half of what they used to pay. Mm -hmm. um, but the railway infrastructure manager, uh, SNCF Réseau, will continue to receive the same amount of money. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference will be paid by the government. Okay. And from the three segments that you mentioned before, combined transport, uh, single wagon uh, transport, and semi-trailer uh, transport, which one does uh, need more boosting in France? Well, I think that all of them need some, um, uh, need some, uh, some sort of boost. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, the perspective is different. Uh, for combined transport and semi-trailers, uh, mm -hmm. there is a clear um, trend for uh, increase uh, in France and in the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's, that's clearly the segment where everybody expects the higher growth. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, this will be even better if it's uh, supported by the government. Okay. For single wagon, that's a more defensive support uh, because in the past, single wagon has been uh, declined, in the decline. Mm -hmm. And so this support is here to uh, make sure that there could be a reversal and that um, at least... Uh, the decline is stopped and hopefully there will be again some sort of growth. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. apart from this funding, is there, are there any other investments that uh, the French government is planning currently? Absolutely. Um, this first uh, funding that we just mentioned mm -hmm. is 170 million per year, mm -hmm. but that's only for the operators, um, okay. you know, railway undertakings and um, uh, combined transport operators. And you said 170 million per year for how many years? For three years. For three years. Uh, uh, 2022, 2023, and 2024. It may last longer, mm -hmm. uh, but for the moment, that's, um, that's for three years. Okay. But then the government um, is working on a second plan, mm -hmm. which this time will be here to support the infrastructure. And this time, this is a one billion plan, which again will be at least for three years, maybe a bit more. One billion, that's a lot of money, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and this is going to support um, many type of investments on the infrastructure. Uh, so this could be the last miles. Uh, this could be um, about um, you know, loading gauge. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be um, um, investments to increase capacity, to make sure that uh, the railway network 
mm -hmm. uh, can accept long trains or heavy trains. Um, um, it's also about ports, um, all, all kind of um, investments mm -hmm. in the railway infrastructure <clears throat> could be potentially covered by, uh, by this plan. Mm -hmm. uh, in an event uh, last week in Luxembourg, the Deputy Prime Minister of Luxembourg uh, mentioned something uh, about uh, his country participating also in the funding of uh, French uh, infrastructure uh, upgrades. Is this true? And if so, uh, how much will the, the participation of Luxembourg will uh, be? Well, to be frank, I don't know the details of, um, of this information, mm -hmm. but that does not come as a surprise as um, uh, there is significant um, traffic, uh, rail freight traffic between mm -hmm. Luxembourg and France, um, either from Luxembourg to Spain mm -hmm. through France or from Luxembourg to Swiss and Italy through, um, uh, through Spain. Mm -hmm. um, there is a very important yard um, in Luxembourg, which is at Betonbourg, Mm -hmm. um, and, and this yard has very uh, important impact on traffic in France. So mm -hmm. it's actually good news that there is some sort of uh, joint effort from both the um, government of Luxembourg and the government of um, France. Mm, it's a cooperation in order to improve uh, cargo flows between the two countries, right? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does the, uh, the European Union uh, back uh, these investments at all or is it or, or are the money invested uh, purely by the French government? Well actually the way it works is that um, I told you that this will be a 1 billion investment mm -hmm. um, but the French government says that um, it will provide itself half of these investments mm -hmm. um, so that's 500 million euros. Mm -hmm. So this means that um, it needs other parties to fund the uh, other 50%, um, again, uh, another 500 million. Mm -hmm. And this could come either uh, from the uh, local authorities, like the regions. Mm -hmm. uh, this could come from the shippers, uh, which are concerned, or this could come from the uh, European Union. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's actually good timing because, uh, as you know, there is this new so-called CEF2 program, mm -hmm. Um, and there's actually a safe call which has been launched in September. Um, so we have an opportunity to complement the investment of the French government with um, EU money. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, we are currently working on preparing applications for this. Mm -hmm. um, typically, this could be interesting for investments on the loading gauge um, or uh, on various investments on the infrastructure to increase capacity or to accept longer trains, things like this. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, apart from the investments in infrastructure, lately we saw that uh, SNCF Rousseau uh, packed an agreement with VNF, which is the navigation authority responsible for the management of France's uh, inland uh, waterways network. What is this cooperation all about? Well, it's actually um, a very interesting cooperation, very promising, I must say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, uh, inland waterways and, um, and um, railways are both um, uh, modes of transport which are very ecological, mm -hmm. uh, and to a large extent, we are complementary. Mm -hmm. um, the strength of um, inland waterways is that um, uh, you know, rivers. Uh, can go even inside the big cities. Mm -hmm. um, like if you take the Seine River, it goes through Paris. Mm -hmm. um, the strength of the uh, railway network is that it's very long. Um, it goes um, more or less everywhere in the French territory and, mm -hmm. and uh, even on the European territory. Um, so if we combine these two strengths, um, we could have um, a good system that will enable goods to come from more or less everywhere in Europe mm -hmm. and directly inside uh, the big cities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that um, we will probably concentrate on um, cooperation for a certain platform mm -hmm. where there will be both um, inland waterways and, um, and railway infrastructures. Mm -hmm. And we think that uh, with this cooperation, we should be able to increase the market share of the so-called um, soft um, uh, you know, soft modes of transport, uh, i.e. inland waterways and, um, um, and rail. No, yeah, this is a very interesting uh, cooperation, uh, to be honest. 
And uh, I, I'm wondering, uh, are the two managers going to invest in joint uh, projects maybe? Well, there, there are a lot we can do. Um, probably we can concentrate on a few platforms and mm -hmm. to make sure that we increase the way it works. Um, I don't know whether this will be on uh, infrastructure investments or on processes uh, you know, to make sure that um, uh, you know, the fact that uh, the shifts from uh, rail to inland waterways or to inland waterways in these platforms work uh, smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, it could also be commercial cooperation, like uh, when we go and see clients, uh, we go together and we provide a combined package to these clients. Mm -hmm. So this is um, in the building at this moment, uh, but certainly we will consider all kind of aspects mm -hmm. uh, if you know, this cooperation can um, uh, you know, put us in a better uh, situation to mm -hmm. convince uh, new shippers to go on either inland waterways or um, you know, on, on the rail or on the combination of the two. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, that's very interesting, as I mentioned, so we're really looking forward to see how this whole concept will develop. Now, as a closing remark, uh, Paul, uh, the Connecting Europe Express had its last stop in uh, Paris, France. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, France is an important part of rail freight, but how has the European Year of Rail uh, been for the country so far? Was it valuable? Uh, did you make any changes that uh, will make an impact in the future or uh, do you or do you need more european years of rail well at this moment um, rail freight in france is 60 percent domestic mm -hmm. and 40 percent international and international means european mm -hmm. uh, so clearly the european part of the rail freight market is crucial um, for this sector. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been some improvements, uh, thanks to support from the European Commission, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, there has been a new line between uh, the port of Le Havre and, uh, and the region of Paris, which has been funded partly by uh, the European Commission, partly by the uh, French government, and mm -hmm. partly by the local uh, authorities. Um, but still, there is some work to do to um, improve interoperability, mm -hmm. uh, like ERTMS, both um, on track um, and, um, and on board. Um, also, we know that um, uh, loading gauge in France is still uh, a little bit uh, restricted, mm -hmm. uh, specifically to um, ensure uh, the fact that uh, P400 semi trailers could be uh, transported by um, rail freight. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that we are all very conscious on um, you know, improvements which could, which could be done in France to make it even um, more friendly for shippers in France, and especially in the context of international connections. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that um, the plan of the French government, if it is supported by the European Commission, will be a super opportunity to um, uh, help this, um, uh, you know, international development of the uh, rail network or the French rail network. Mm -hmm. All right. Then, Paul, uh, thank you very much. My pleasure. And uh, we'll see each other again soon, hopefully. Yes, thank you very much. With okay. pleasure.